So greetings and welcome to our uh, series of uh, Wikisite discussion series brought to you by IFLA, the Wikisite project and the Wikimedia Foundation uh, by the IFLA Wikidata Working Group. We're really pleased to come to you today and we want to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, the Wikisite project, Wikimedia Foundation for funds to support this work as well as uh, IFLA. Uh, the Wikidata Working Group for IFLA uh, exists to encourage and support the use and development of Wikidata and Wikibase by the professional library community. And this series uh, is intended to uh, allow us to uh, learn uh, about different projects uh, in the library world using um, open bibliographic data and open citation. We're really pleased today to have with us um, two people who are really leading uh, a lot of work around Wikibase and authority data. So uh, with us today is Barbara Fisher. She's a humanist and arts manager. She works as a communication manager and liaison counsel at the Office for Library Standards at the German National Library, fostering cross-domain collaborations and cooperations concerning the GND, the common authority control for German speaking countries. And also with us today is Sarah Hartman, and she is a librarian and works at the Office for the Library Standards at the German National Library. She's part of the team which is responsible for the authority file, the GND, which is used in libraries and numerous other institutions in the German speaking countries. And the title of their talk today is The GND Meets Wikibase, and I'm going to turn it over to them. Hello from our side, um, best greetings from Germany, at least we can say we are both in Germany, Sarah and me. Uh, Sarah is actually in the area of Frankfurt for the moment and I'm in the area of Berlin. We're very happy to be able to talk to you and give you some insights on um, the GMD meets Wikibase project, which we have been running since the beginnings of 2019. Um, yeah, well, we aim with that cooperation we are running with Wikimedia Deutschland is um, we would like to have our free structured uh, authority data easier accessible and interoperable. Thus, we are testing Wikibase on its functionality as a toolkit for regulations. Maybe you don't know the GND by, uh, yet. Um, this is, uh, I can't blame you, not everybody knows the GND, but if you live in German speaking countries and you work for libraries, you surely knew, know our authority file. Um, for the moment, it has 60 million identifiers that refer to persons, names of persons. We will delete them within short. So it's only 8 million left then, but beyond those persons, we have corporations, uh, conferences, geographical names, subject headings, and work titles, which means it has been the authority file of librarians for uh, a very long time, now opening towards uh, other domains such as museums and archives and um, science institutions. It is co cooperatively run by the GND agencies and it has about a thousand institutions as um, editors or active users. It is completely licensed under CC0 which means you can freely reuse it and um, it has both an API and documentation of course how to use it. For the moment uh, as I said we are opening this handy tool of librarians uh, towards the GLAM field, galleries, libraries, archives and museums, and science, and even others. Um, there are some administration authorities that are interested in our authority data in order to be able to organize um, their data and make it more interoperable for others, which means that we are looking for how to integrate these different institutions. 
And this led us to Wikibase. Um, for those that haven't heard about Wikibase yet, I mean, there are lots of wiki projects around the world. Wikibase is an open source product on behalf of the Wikimedia Foundation that runs Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikisource, and other Wikimedia projects. Um, Wikibase is like an extension to the uh, well-known MediaWiki software, and it is developed by the staff of Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, yeah, that extension Wikibase is basically serving the needs of Wikidata, which is such a data uh, to empower Wikipedia. And uh, we are now facing a development where it becomes a standardized product uh, in order to suit the needs of other institutions or projects uh, beyond Wikidata. And this is where we stepped in uh, with our evaluation project. So we, we have, as I said in the beginning, um, we are running this project since the beginnings of 2019. And first year, we focused on the proof of concept if the uh, Wikibase software as such would be suitable for our needs. And now in the second year, we are testing the capacity. And I like to, if you have the opportunity to follow the links in the presentations to the blog post, you're kindly invited to read them through in order to get uh, further information. So, as I said, our proof of concept was um, basically our um, work in 2019, and we had three basic questions. One question was if the Wikibase software is more convenient for collaborative production than our actual um, software we're using for, for, the, for now. As I said in the beginning, um, the GND is already uh, produced by lots of different institutions. But they are all libraries. And of course, they have like a rather common set of software. But opening to uh, a cross domain field means that we uh, face lots of different software solutions out there. And we hope that using Wikibase will make it easier to uh, organize that collaboration. Um, we also like to find out uh, if using Wikibase makes it more easy to edit authority files. So will it increase the usability in comparison to the software we use? And the last question, question um, that is more linked to the idea of linked open data and the semantic web is if if we use Wikibase, will that ease us the um, access to other authority data and further structured data instances? Those were the three questions. And as I think, yeah, now I would like to hand over to my colleague Sarah in order to explain more in detail what we actually do. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So what have we done so far in this uh, proof of concept? Uh, first of all, we installed uh, three GND Wikibase instances um, by using um, Linux and Docker and Docker Compose. The first instance is for the data modeling, which represent uh, the actual GND, or as we sometimes call it, GND status quo, uh, where we also um, import existing GND data. Um, the second instance is uh, more for testing purposes. It's a kind of test system for the data modeling issues and for import of data. And the third instance is for the test of the data modeling concerning all the requirements which um, come up from um, the GLAMs, especially from archives and museums so far. Um, to give you an example, um, there's definitely a need uh, to state um, the source for any statement, uh, which is really difficult uh, in our current systems to realize, and it can be um, easily fulfilled in Wikibase because it's one of the key functions within Wikibase. Yeah, what 
we have done next is uh, to define and create properties uh, manually for the representation of the GND status quo, for example, and added then um, content via quick statements. Um, for the GND status quo or the actual GND, we stick to our existing data model and format where possible and where it was um, reason reasonable because we have in mind to import the data and export it as well, um, export the data as well, which is established in Wikibase and synchronize it with probably different uh, systems. Yeah, we defined uh, properties for descriptive um, metadata for different kinds of entities, um, uh, such as persons, corporate bodies, um, conferences, works, subjects, and geographic names. And um, additionally, um, we add some properties for administrative metadata, which are really necessary um, for some kind of workflows within um, the GND. Um, as well, we included mappings uh, to our internal format, which is called Pika, and our export format, Mock21, um, as well as mappings uh, to GND ontology. Um, that's the vocabulary uh, we use for the representation of the GND as uh, linked data. And we included some equivalent um, properties as well, um, such as RDA properties. Yeah, then um, we created some items, um, uh, examples, so to speak, in order to test um, the data model we defined, um, including items for controlled vocabs, uh, which means um, for well use um, for properties which object um, data type is um, item, for example. Yeah, additionally, um, we tested and still test um, if Wikibase is um, suitable for the documentation and the curation of the uh, GND data model and um, the rules um, we use and for the maintenance of other vocabs which are um, associated with the GND vocabulary. And then we imported um, a test set of approximately 19,000 um, records, existing GND data records um, in the Wikibase instance. And um, therefore, it was necessary to do a conceptual mapping um, first. We tested it in two different uh, ways or two different mappings, one based on Mark 21 and one based on our internal format in order to check uh, what's best for the mapping the, for mapping the data and uh, the requirements for import and export of the data. Um, the test hasn't uh, fully finished yet, but uh, we can say at the moment um, that uh, the internal format is sometimes easier to map <laughs> to our um, defined properties. But on the other hand, uh, we can't really uh, share our mappings um, easily and the data modeling issues with a wider community. And that's probably some crucial point as well. And additionally, we had a closer look at the um, user and uh, rights management within Wikibase on a more conceptual level, I would say. Um, we just uh, looked at it, if it's possible to rebuild the user and access restrictions um, in Wikibase, um, we have some of you within the GND context. Yeah, some um, technical um, issues we'd like to address. Our first approach regarding the import of the data was to use um, quick statements. And the second one was to use a Python script. Um, that means uh, we read the mark data with PyMark. We um, changed and um, added some, um, some mark fields and um, uh, properties as well, as you can imagine. And um, the writing is done via Wikidata integrator. And the first approach um, concerning the quick statements took longer than the one with uh, WDI um, with the Wikidata integrator. Um, we, um, it was a speed up for of 44%. 
um, that's quite okay, we would say. And if we use Wikidata Integrator for the import of the complete GND of, um, at the moment, approximately 8 million records, uh, this will take around about 15, 15 days for the initial, initial import. In addition, we had to think about um, a plan for um, the import of the whole GND data because it is highly interlinked already. Uh, this means in a GND record, there are links to other GND records. Uh, for example, when um, stating an affiliation or a place of establishment, for example, it is done by an identifier to another GND uh, record for the corporate body or place in this example. And uh, sure, sure, we like to, um, to keep these links and rebuild them in uh, Wikibase. So uh, the plan is to do the import incrementally. Um, this means um, to initially create items, QIDs for GND IDs, then have a Sparkle output or other export um, for mapping the QIDs uh, to GND IDs, and then add the statements to these items by using these QIDs. So what's um, the learning from um, this proof of concept so far? Uh, Wikibase is used primarily for Wikidata or for the creation of new databases so far, but um, if we want to import existing interlinked data, this requires some time and effort. Yeah, and in principle, uh, one can say that the data modeling and the creation of the data is uh, really uh, easy within um, Wikibase. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. And uh, we definitely realized um, that, especially for import and export purposes, if one likes to synchronize um, the data in Wikibase with the data in other systems, um, the data modeling needs uh, definitely for the testing. So I just uh, said that the creation and the updating of the data within Wikibase is uh, really easy. And that's definitely true if you know and document um, uh, document the rules and stuff um, within the instance um, for the um, for the users, but we realized um, that editing templates are necessary for current users and especially for new GND new users. And um, that's similar to our current systems. There are some kinds of templates, um, what properties or attributes uh, to add or to establish when establishing um, an authority record. Yeah, and we realized that <clears throat> the creation of these editing templates uh, is more complex than expected, but it can be done. Now we'd hand over to Barbara again. Yeah, thank you, Sara. Um, well, if you do have questions at the moment, we can take them or you like, if you haven't understood something or something, basic questions like that. If not, I would just like to continue for um, what we are doing this year. All right. So uh, this year we are testing the capacity of Wikibase as, as a software. Um, as Sara reflected before, um, Wikibase until now has not established like a um, like a bulk upload button or feature um, that, that service, services various um, instances at, at the same time, because uh, even if, they, if Wikidata statements and a larger extent uh, were integrated into Wikidata, they had to uh, have lots of patience and do that through long nights in order to uh, upload, um, for instance, the headings of uh, Wikipedia articles or so. So um, for now, Wikibase has been in use in, in various institutions and, and for various communities. But basically, for now, 
in order to build up a database. And um, in our case, we have already a database and that database is rather, is quite uh, large with 8 million items. So um, um, this is really, a, really a challenge for not only for us, but also for our partners at Wikimedia Deutschland in order to um, really make it happen that we get all our data inside um, our Wikibase instance, which means that not only items, but uh, of course also their relations in between those items. So uh, this is what, what we are working on right now in order to make that happen. And what we also face in that situation is that the exchange formats we use regularly in the librarian field are not standard formats that are used, let's say, in the Wikimedia field. So we have to do some adaptions there as well. Um, sometimes it feels a little bit as if Brexit is already fulfilled, um, you know, then uh, we have, we are back to that situation where the sockets uh, from, from one country is not fitting the plugins from, from the other. So uh, uh, lots of standardization is necessary here in order to create Wikibase as a good software platform where to handle large um, amounts of structured data. Um, what we also will fa uh, are working on this year is um, we will have our Wikibase instance or the GMD in our Wikibase instance as a second home. So we will keep our, um, our master of the GMD in the CVS where we have it right now, in the software structure where we have it right now, because uh, in order to extract it there, we would have to change so many of our workflows that it would not be worthwhile. So our idea is in, to have like the Wikibase instance for, for some users and uh, the master copy in order to uh, facilitate the, the reuse of um, the authority file within our normal workflows as a library. The third um, focus will be, um, as Sarah mentioned, uh, we need templates, we need interfaces where our users, our editors will be find it easier to edit either the record of a person or the record of um, a work title or a geographical name, which always will face different properties that are necessary. And uh, in order not to confuse them, we would really like to have templates, uh, templates that only show what kind of properties they would have to fill in for a certain type of, of entity. And this takes some time to develop that as well because it's um, the software is not providing like a set of um, a modular uh, framings you can simply add together as you may use uh, or may know from other database software, but you still have to do a lot of coding yourself. And uh, concerning user roles and access management, um, this is also uh, it is feasible, as we saw in the first uh, in the first year, we can do it. But of course, here we we are. Um, there are like two different concepts um, meeting each other. Like the uh, wiki media concept is how everybody can can do everything, and then in the second thought, it is oh maybe not, and in the librarian field, it's just the other way around. Only if you can do everything, and then oh, it would be nice if more could do more. So uh, you see, it's a, a different approach, and we are uh, working on it in order to get it feasible for, for our specific needs. Um, yeah, I would like to come back to the um, synchronization problem or the synchronization idea, Rebecca. Um, we have um, we have not yet being able to 
uh, really code all that. We are right now we are looking for coders in order to to help us here. Um, but the idea is rather visible in that um, in that slide. As you can see uh, on the right hand side, you will see our Wikibase instance and. Uh, the, the user, the editor, will be able to modify new entries, um, enter new entries, get feedback to entries, and, um, and then the, um, the data would be run over to the left side for our GND master instance. And there it comes at first as a suggestion, which needs to be uh, approved in order to be added to our um, GMD master copy. So imagine you would like to add it uh, authority record um, on Stacy. Um, then you will do that in the Wikibase instance and you will add all the properties needed in order to make it this ambiguous. Uh, so we won't conf confuse Stacy with another Stacy that lives somewhere else and does something else and publishes something else, but we will know it's Stacy Allison Kesson and no other Stacy. And then we will transfer it to um, the uh, green part here, the suggestions, and it will get approved. And then Stacy Allison's uh, GND record becomes a, gets an identifier and becomes um, part of the, the GND master. And um, so like this is rather basic concept, but how to realize it in a technical way is far more complicated because um, those two um, software databases are not normally um, talking to each other, which means that we have to focus a lot on, on APIs, developing interfaces and, and making it possible to run the system as much um, automatic automatized as possible. Coming to the uh, next slide, the the other point we are focusing on is the GMB documentation. Um, as you probably all um, experience being librarians, you know authority files builds heavily on um, standards, and those standards are created by rules. And uh, many of you may uh, have in usage the RDA and, um, and rule sets that are derived from, from the RDA. Um, and so is the German speaking countries doing as well. And uh, a lot of these documentation or these rules and, and um, application profiles is dispersed in many different um, documents, which makes it like a science of itself in order to really be sure that you do the right thing when you're editing an authority record. So what we are doing now opening for other domains, we need to focus all that different documentation placed in different spaces and, and in different documents into one platform and uh, as, it, as it is used both for cataloging and creating authority files, we will also try to specify, specify when is it actually a rule that you need to create a new authority record and when it, it, is it more tilted towards uh, your doing your cataloging work. So, we thought that or think that Wikibase might be a very suitable place in order to uh, document everything that is needed to create authority files and, uh, and then deriving from that instance of the documentation, creating templates that will help us to edit authority files in the di different categories um, such as persons or geographical names or uh, corporate bodies or so. And um, we also want uh, to use that documentation in order um, to uh, 
to give you a true setup of which statements or which kind of properties are needed if you create a new authority record. So you don't have to, like if you are creating a authority record on let's say a geographical name, you won't have to bother about how do, you, do I have to create a statement on its time, its time span. But um, you will know, okay, I need to give it the geo coordinates and um, I will have to define if it is like just a spot or if it is a polygon or, or so. But um, I don't have to focus on all the other properties as well. And um, Sarah told me the other day she has already developed, was it 50 properties um, for some entity types in the GMD? And there are far more to come. So I, I think people can be really happy if they get like a reduced set of properties um, within their wiki base. Um, so the idea would be that um, in, in the long run, you can access our wiki base instance on the GMD, both on the entity type, such as person or geographical name, class of body or work title, but you can also go through property, like could be date of birth or geo coordinate, or other relation, meaning like this person is married to the other person. Um, as you are known in Wikidata, which gives you the incredible spread of, of queries or, or possi possibilities of queries, so you can combine different relation types and different property types and entity types in order to create the most incredible kind of um, queries that give you results that for now we would not be able to give them within the GMD. Next slide maybe. Um, as we, we have mentioned now several times, uh, Wikibase is somehow, um, I don't know if that is an idiomatic way to say it in English, but in German we would say it's still in its baby shoes. So it is not yet uh, a full um, commercial product. I mean, it will never be commercial because it's open source, but you understand what, I'm, what I mean. So um, um, Wikimedia um, Deutschland is working on its governance model for that software product and to have it going beyond like a community driven extension of the media wiki and if i speak of community driven the, the default community member is not an institution by now the default is an individual and it's quite different if you are working with individuals or if you're working with institutions it's not just the same. So throughout the year, we are tightly working together with Wikimedia, finding out together what that governance model means. And we are happy that they are sharing so openly their thoughts with us and we can um, tell them our requirements and other thoughts. And um, what we also found is that it is really helpful to look out for other institutions that are interested in the use of Wikibase and uh, would like to deepen uh, exchange um, on knowledges and skills in, in using Wikibase or applying Wikibase for their own needs. So uh, here too, we are very interested in getting new feedback in order to find out what are you doing with the Wikibase software because we feel we are somehow part of something greater. I mentioned before that we see by using Wikibase the opportunity to become part of a data ecosystem going far beyond libraries, uh, also going beyond the idea to link our data to Wikidata, but to link it to various different data hubs and not pretending to be able to suck in everything to our data hub, but rather to 
build bridges from one data hub to the other and such creating a very large but solid network of information throughout the world. I reckon there's still another slide. Yeah, that's the slide saying thank you. And we are very, very delighted and curious uh, to hear your remarks and questions. So please don't hesitate to come up with them. Great, so thank you very much for that um, presentation. There is a lot of really, really um, fascinating and exciting uh, content. I mean, I'm speaking as a probably a, a metadata geek, but I think that we're probably all uh, in, that, in that place. So um, thank you. Uh, and we have, do have a few questions um, we'd like to ask. And um, so I will, will start and, you know, speaking to the, the world of uh, professional librarians, um, people working in, in libraries around the world. Um, what do you see as, as being sort of the area of greatest need that you would, uh, if you could communicate to these librarians around the world, what would you like to say uh, to, to people to think about where um, they can help or how they can help with, with the, the project of bringing um, bibliographic data and especially authority data into this um, linked data ecosystem? Well, um, I don't know, Sada, you, you certainly want to add things to that, but um, I believe that for one thing, librarians have been, um, have been working such a long time in sharing metadata um, across their infrastructures. So they're far beyond in everything that concerns standards. And, uh, and that's something that museums and archives, because their working routines were different, have not developed yet. So, um, or not that to that extent, let's say. Um, that's, that's one thing, there's a lot of standardization skills within the libraries. We like to, from, from the GLAM field as a whole, that is very um, welcomed to share. And the other part is that in the last years, we have digitized lots and lots of content. And this content is now online. And, uh, and if you don't find it, it, it is as if it wasn't there. So. Uh, we need to provide tools, provide means how to find this content. And of course, we can all rely on some algorithm that are provided by some nice uh, enterprises. Um, but of course, this is, then they provide these services on their business model. And if we like to have like an alternative to that, we need to be more independent and providing means to interconnect our content and make it uh, increase the retrieval of our content beyond those algorithm or alongside this algorithm. It's not so much going against each other or being, um, being opponents, it is more uh, to have like an alternative way to, to find that. And I've, I see that more and more GLAM institutions and more and more science institutions go for that. And uh, they find that metadata is becoming something that is, that is very useful to share. And uh, so they are looking around for people that have those skills to create metadata that you can share. And that's where librarians come in. So I really hope that librarians are willing and, um, and find it easy to share their skills with the other GLAM folks. I just like to add uh, one thing um, when talking about the algorithm stuff and um, just um, mentioning all the link data representations out there. That's definitely um, something to improve, I would say. But um, at the moment, um, I do see 
definitely um, a really positive within the wiki base uh, world to ease such um, to do the linkage when establishing um, a record an authority record so to speak just to um, give you hints um, where is another representation of this entity i just um, add something to or something like that and um, uh, that's probably a pain point in the systems we use at the moment we can add some other identifiers for the same entity but that's um, not that easy you have to look a bit often in another system and then add the identifier or copy paste it or something like that and um, hopefully this could be very easy um, to solve so that um, some catalogers i use the the old term or editors can just add links to other entities and representations of the same entities as well yeah may i just add like a um a specific point there like if we use an open source software product um instead of using um softwares that is run under a license systems um then it it may make it easier to build those linkage these links and make it easier to build those bridges um which will then be like in the long run more sustainable for for our system as well um like when when we all started with the um the digital transformation most people thought well the best idea would be to have it all in one right get it all into wikidata or get it all into wikipedia or another system but then you see that it's not only data it's also persons it is humans that create this data and it's humans that also care for that data they the humans are needed in order to make the, uh, the, the to increase the quality of the data and um, humans need motivation to work it's not only their paycheck that makes them work it's also their love for the data they they care for um, but then they need to be able to identify with that data and when it gets too large when that data hub gets too large then the distance between me and my data set is getting too large as well so it's probably better to have like smaller data hubs where you as a community rule how those data is created and how you care for it and which rules apply to it and what properties you like to have instead of having a huge well one fits all kind of data hub so uh, here we really hope that using the open source software wikibase will make it easier to collaborate but still keep our our own space yeah that's great thank you I, i'm just gonna uh i think that's really wonderful to think about um this idea and i think we've seen it in some of the other talks we've had too around thinking about how uh you know the the, it's data, but it's, it is related to, to humans. It's human culture, it's human relationships. And so, so something to think about is sort of the relationality of the data and what that means for us as sort of caretakers or, or, or thinking about how, um, how we create this data in a lot of ways to make, to make the world a better place, to bring uh, more visibility to the things we care about and um, something that I think is really wonderful about the possibilities of this project is we know as catalogers, and I'll even use the old terminology for catalogers, that when we create authority uh, files or authority records, frequently add in lots and lots of content, which often doesn't get used. There's a lot of research that often happens when we're creating entities uh, in an original way around people or, or uh, places or topics. And so, the ability to connect up some of those more granular pieces of data around let's say a person entity with with a person and ent entity of the same person somewhere else and then to be able to query that data to bring about really interesting um 
pictures of some of those relationships is really fascinating and wonderful and I think is very motivating. And so being able to bring it into an open source system which allows bibliographic or authority data to, to build those relationships um, across in an international context is really uh, exciting. So I think it's, it's a really great way of thinking about this idea of, of caring or caretaking for sort of our, our data sets that we produce, but then also allowing for these, these interconnections with all different kinds of data stores and beyond the library as well, which I think again is really exciting. So thank you, thank you for, for that elaboration. I'm going to turn it over to Miguel, who I think has a question. Yeah, I do. Um, uh, you mentioned for, from your presentation the, the problem with templates to describe data, right? So one of the things I was thinking about is whether, and you also speak about the wiki, uh, wiki based governance. So we are also depending on the evolution of the uh, software itself. So my question is a very straightforward one is uh, how can libraries or librarians in this case that have a lot of years of experience with data modeling uh, help uh, maybe uh, uh, Wikimedia projects uh, to fit our our um, problems because uh, as you mentioned uh, probably in the glam sector you 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 have a lot of descriptions that are already structured so you have to find out well, from one million properties that you have on Wikidata, for example, you you already had that. So probably we we need to get the coders and say, okay, so I need, for example, uh, a file or, or or a model for a person, and which are the fields that are necessary to to describe that. Uh, okay, so uh, and of course with the flexibility to add. Uh, extra items. So my question is, how do you see uh, the library community work together with uh, the project of Wikimedia, uh, mainly Wikidata and Wikibase? Shall I start? Um, I do believe there are um, there are editing templates. Um, uh, for Wikidata um, at the moment, and but it's really, I would say, it's kind of hard coded and it's um, strictly uh, sticked to Wikidata, and it's not very open uh, to all Wikibase instances. And there's uh, at the moment, uh, it would uh, it would mean a lot of scripting and stuff to establish uh, such templates. Um, we heard. Um, I think it was la last week or so that um, in the Wikimedia uh, Foundation established a subgroup of uh, librarians. Um, so this would be a chance to just discuss these issues and bring forward all the requirements we have. And um, I do believe it's on the roadmap um, for Wikimedia um, to just um, ask for requirements, um, especially in this field of um, editing templates. Well, I also would like to remark that the, the, the specific good thing about open source is that you can add code snippets to it. So it's, it is not as working with, let's say SAP, where you have to turn to SAP with a requirement procedure. Well, we would like to have this kind of um, alternation in the software code and, uh -huh, and then maybe a few years later it is done but you can do it yourself right um what what is needed is then to find out if your extension of the extension like the template you build if that will still work when there is a new version of the wiki based software so this is this is like the the uh, specific interface where we'll have to see how the governance is is working but the good thing is that we can build our own templates as soon as we have the the capacity to do so i, I mean i can can't do that coding but um <laughs> nor sarah but i mean um it is not that we don't have to rely on the wikimedia stuff for that so it's not 
sending out like a Christmas letter to Wikimedia saying, please give us a new uh, template. Now we can do that by ourselves. And then what we are debating right now is how to make sure that if we create templates, how will they stick um, to Wikibase if that gets further developed? That's one thing. The other thing is that there are lots of tools that makes it easier to work with Wikidata, but they're specific for Wikidata. So now we are looking on that long list of tools, finding out which are the tools that are applicable to Wikibase straight ahead and what is needed in order to make them applicable and which of those tools are the ones that we really love to have applicable. And, uh, and then again, I think uh, creating this subdivision of librarians within the Wikidata group for Wikimedia also means, okay, it's not only hearing our requirements and listening to our requirements, it's also gathering skills. Like there are lots of people around the world that work on this topic. And in order like not to have the same thing recreated over and over again, it is very good to have it in a structured way and, and gathered together. So um, yeah, it's a little bit like, like being a pioneer. Um, if you start to work with Wikibase, it's a bit, little bit like being a pioneer in a new field that has many, many advantages because you're rather free, but it also has some disadvantages because you don't know where you are ending up with. Thank you. It's great. I think, uh, Joachim, you have a, a question next. Hi, my name is Joachim Neubert from ZBW and uh, ZBW in Germany. Uh, one question about, uh, perhaps related to the last one by Miguel, um, you mentioned entity types in GND like persons or corporate bodies or, or, or work titles. And uh, do you have some uh, learning how to implement this in, uh, entity types and do you have plans for using uh, so relatively new uh, schema extension of Wikidata for this which would allow perhaps to describe the shape uh, of each entity type and and uh, even perhaps uh, base some tooling on this uh, shape description, which is done uh, experimentally with Gradle, for example, which could make perhaps uh, it easier to adapt uh, these, these entity types to Wikidata as well as uh, the GND conventions. Good. Definitely right. Um, Joachim, we hadn't had the chance to have a deeper look into the schema extension so far in our proof of concept, but that's definitely on our uh, agenda. Um, for example, as you mentioned, um, uh, referring to the entity types and um, the uh, constraints, so to speak. Yeah. How are, do, how May are I just you? Add, add something, Joachim? Sorry? May I just mm -hmm. add uh, oh. something to that um, answer? I think the um, one of the challenges in creating the linked open data ecosystem we've talked about is finding a way of doing federation in a rather, let's say, smooth way. So for for authority file, it is very hard to say that something is not exactly matching. Um, normally you create authority file in order to be able to say it's exactly that, that's what they are for. But if, if you are going to link it to other, to other data hubs, um, you might find that it is not that easy to link the semantic of one data hub to the exact semantic of the other data hub. So uh, we will find we will have to find solutions for let's say like a, 
a fuzzy way of matching uh, those two uh, or three or four or even more concepts. And that, I think that is also valid for the data models, um, like the, the schemes that we find in Wikidata for, the, for um, defining categories um, may not be fully identi uh, identical with the schemes we use within the GMD. But we can say they're somehow more or less fitting to each other. And in order to balance this somehow, you need to be both in the technical way, but also in the conceptual way, you need to be a little bit flexible. And this is something we, we are working on. Sorry, I suppose this was a bit of a misunderstanding. My idea was not to use any of the existing schemas in Wikidata, which would make no sense because things are different conceptually, uh, but to use the mechanism of schema building for describing the GND uh, structures. And uh, I think there could be some potential uh, to, to use it in this way. Uh, so I suppose you currently uh, just defining classes for the different entity types. And uh, this is a good start for connecting more semantics to this, how these classes should be defined. Yeah, as Sarah said, um, this, this is on our agenda and we will have to look deeper into it. Um, and, um, and maybe we can take up the topic in, in a year or so, and then we would be able to give you some more deeper insights. Uh, great. So um, I think we just have uh, time for one more question. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to, to Carla to ask our, our last uh, question of our session. Thank you so much for um, your uh, presentation and talk. I belong to the scientific uh, academic community uh, because I work in a university and you know there are a lot of issues because there is always the peer review, the data, etc. So I would like to have an insight from you, a reply. Uh, if you find the same, because you know with GLAM it is um, interesting, amazing. With the scientific community is not, or maybe they would say, ah, oh, but you are academic librarian is too demanding, too much work, so leave it. So can you reply to it? Thank you. To start, Sarah, would you like to start or you want me to start? Go ahead. Okay. Um, right now there, across Europe, you will find there's a lot of um, um, infrastructure built for um, scientific research data. Um, and, um, and, and I believe that standardization within the research field is even less developed than, than within the GLAM field as a whole. Um, but we also see that research is done more and more across domains. So it's ac across disciplines. So it's not only the historian working with historic data, but it is also the other hum humanities and maybe even life science that like to share that data. And in order to be able to share that data, they would need to find reference points where they could link it up. So I think that could be a very basic motivation for also scientists to, uh, um, to include in their metadata on their research data. Um, authority file in order, uh, authority records, in order to make it easier to link other data to that. And it's not only a, 
uh, about linking data. It is also reducing your workload because um, if you use authority records, you don't have to repeat everything that is already within the authority record. That's why they were created in the first run. Uh, librarians um, are very efficient workers. They, uh, they like to uh, use, or they, they established this idea of authority record in order to reduce the workload. And this is something, especially scientists, very often working on their own, being like one women shows um, should be keen to hear, hear and keen to learn how they could possibly reduce their workload and gaining at the same time all the, the features of linked open data. So um, I think that, that, I think your question was going in that direction, like how to motivate the scientists to use authority record it is uh, a twofold advantage. You have like for one, the advantage is uh, you gain more connection and visibility for your data. And the second advantage is you reduce your workload because you don't have to add all the information that is already out there, but you can reuse it. And there might be a third one, um, adding like not only visibility to your data, but making your data by cooperating with others more standard, um, more standard, I can't say the word, following up the standards <laughs> and, uh, and thus um, make it easier that that data may be reused. So you live up to these fair data principles that very often are linked to the funding of research across Europe as well. I'd just like to add one thing short, I promise. Um, probably you heard of um, the activities which we've done right now within um, within Germany. Uh, we had and have a project called um, ORCID DE for uh, Germany. And this approach is um, to just link um, but, uh, link the identifiers ORCID and GND as well. And it's possible to integrate within the ORCID profile and have a lookup um, of the GND and establish a linkage between ORCID and GND. And um, we do um, import um, the identifiers as well. If we get those from, um, from scientific publishers, for example, we get those ORCID identifiers and then match it with the GND identifiers and establish a link between our BIP data and the authority records, just mentioning that project. Well, I think that's a really wonderful place to end, considering this is a wiki site uh, project and, um, and thinking about those linkages between uh, authority data created by libraries, um, data in ORCID, the data need for, needed for a citation and the visibility of publications um, and, and research uh, around the world. I mean, these are really important uh, ways of leveraging uh, and reusing the data that is created for all of these, these things rather than having to recreate data. Of course, I do love efficiencies in metadata creation. So, so how do we not duplicate all of those uh, efforts in different databases, but also uh, allowing for a really important interlinking to make, to make all of those things uh, more visible. So that's excellent. So um, we are at the end of our time, but uh, thank you uh, both very much, uh, Sarah and Barbara, for joining us today um, and talking about that work that's happening. It's very, very exciting. And um, we really do look forward to hearing um, more about it in the future. So thank you. Uh, you're so welcome. And we really enjoyed being with you and uh, and hear all your questions. And please, when you see that recording, don't hesitate to contact us, reach out to us in order to link up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.